morning. Hello, everybody. Um, it's a great pleasure um, to enjoy a kind of a revival because uh, we all got uh, probably tired of the entire digital only online team sessions, WebEx sessions, Skype sessions. So it's a great pleasure to being physically here on site in Sinus to smell the ocean to be literally a couple of uh, kilometers away of, of landing of sea cables and infrastructure and to meet a lot of well-known faces of friends and partners because we should not forget that apart from the infrastructure it's also about a network of partners stakeholders a business network of people who do create this community and build infrastructure and uh, support it it's my great pleasure to uh, share with you thoughts on infrastructure and importance of the infrastructure for the new digital era. We all agree we're heading off to and to talk about the new digital highways. And of course, and this is uh, the special topic of DKX, the new interconnection regime. First of all, before I start uh, uh, sharing with you detailed ideas uh, on the topics, I want to briefly explain what DICX stays for today. Um, after 26 years of operations started in the early 90s in Frankfurt, Germany, DICX stays today for the largest data center and carrier neutral interconnection ecosystem on the planet, serving 28 different metros around the globe on four continents where thousands of networks are connected to exchanging terabits of traffic representing the global internet and digital infrastructure community. We are present, as you can see, in more of 500 different data centers from different types, different sizes, different business models. And I call this the freedom of interconnection. Choice, freedom of choice for a data center, freedom of choice of a transport operator, connectivity provider on one platform with a lot of different services, starting with the well-known peering as, as one of the type of interconnections, heading off to a cloud exchange services and different type of uh, um, a very innovative nowadays, uh, even enterprise interconnection services. Now let's think about the topic of this session, um, which is about uh, the developing the data value chain, expanding and making the most of data storage, processing and distribution. I will summarize this into a successful data journey. Data journey for organizations, data journey at the end of the day for the users. And that's, that's all about, because we are industry, representing an industry, creating value for the users at the end, in living rooms and in offices. This is all about. Um, now, we agree that digitalization is everywhere. I think especially after the challenging pandemic uh, time, we, we hope to kind of uh, get manageable very soon. Uh, we have seen how important digitalization is and every single organization on this planet is aware of. So digitalization is everything. You see the different sectors illustrated on this site, they all have to deal and deal and will deal even more with digitalization in the future, like mobility, finance sector, e-health, very important, education, entertainment, um, and even agriculture. We know that there are sensors on tomato plants to report the level of uh, 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 ripeness and processing there. So um, all this um, tells us uh, a story of a new interconnection regime which is needed to serve this demand, this huge demand of uh, digital services. And this regime stays for interconnection everywhere, for everything and everyone. Um, why? Because interconnection stays for the guarantee on the common trends and the needs on the market, disregarding about which sector we're talking about. If it's finance, um, healthcare, mobility in general, logistics, education, or health, these sectors, they have four common needs. 
It's about performance. The speed is extremely important. It's about efficiency of managing the scalability of data growth and data management, the data journey we are talking about. And it's about security and last but not least, compliance. It's about data compliance, personal data compliance, and of course, compliance related to the policies of the different stakeholders and organizations. And this new digital era with a new interconnection regime consists of a one very important infrastructure requirement. And I want to display this using the, the journey of the applications, because it's all about applications. Disregarding if those applications serve the business or the private life of all of us. And you see displayed different examples of applications we do use daily. Industries use daily and every single second. We see, we're talking about virtual desktops. We're talking about, we all know what I'm talking about. We have uh, got used to, right, in our home offices. And we're talking about video conferencing, and this is what, um, what I, I started with, uh, now having the pleasure to present in real here, uh, being very happy about this. We're talking about, uh, in the private sector, about live streaming, about gaming, real-time online gaming, about uh, real-time live sports streaming, in 4K, in 8K, in the best quality users uh, deserve uh, worldwide uh, in every single living room. And we're talking about industry, we're talking about uh, robotics, we're talking about manufacturing, autom automatization in manufacturing, and all these applications, they have one very important requirement in common. We're talking about speed, the speed of light, counted not in milli-minutes, it's counted in milliseconds. And the milliseconds are related to distance, right? If you see these examples, talking about um, streaming of, of movies, like, like on Amazon Prime or on Netflix, we are talking uh, about a maximum of 65 milliseconds. This is where the journey starts today. Uh, higher than 65 milliseconds doesn't do the trick anymore if we talk about high, high, high resilience on the video content. And now, imagine, live video streaming on sports in 4K or even in the normal res uh, 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 high definition. Uh, we are talking about real-time online gaming. Then we are talking about 25 to 30 milliseconds. And down the road, what is about uh, live doctor visits, uh, remote patient management in real time. If, it, if we talk about real time, and we have the importance of this uh, during the Amazon's presentation about automatization in industries and manufacturing, and auto, autonomous driving and connected cars communication, we're talking in a range of even one to two milliseconds only. So this is all about latency is the new currency already. It, it became the new currency and requires to bring digital applications, content and data storage as close as possible to where the users are where the people are, where the cars are, where the manufacturing happens, where the data centers are built, where the sea cables are landing. That's all about. So, let's think how to bring that closer to the people, closer to the cars. Having this infrastructure literally on every single big highway crossroad. It's about the components of digital infrastructure which need to be developed. Those components like data centers, last my developments, 5G cables, uh, and of course, um, interconnection services. I wanna share with you uh, what happened in the past five years in Europe with a special focus on South Europe, DICX is so committed to, to develop uh, a new gravity for Europe, but also beyond Europe for the Americas and uh, Africa. And, um, I want to refer to a special, uh, it's a kind of a sneak preview to a special white paper uh, DECX will proud to co-announce with Telegeography on the 16th of June. So this is a very, very uh, up-to-date information, not published yet, will be released in a couple of weeks from now about the landscape in South Europe, interconnection landscape. So first uh, data out of this uh, very important white paper, we see over the past five years, the growth on internet exchanges or interconnection platform um, in Europe uh, has been an amazing one, but you see the growth in the south is now 
um, heading heading uh, 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 up with the growth in the well-established old-fashioned markets in Europe like Frankfurt, London, Amsterdam, and uh, uh, Paris. On the data center side, we do see even higher growth, even higher growth. There have been 55 new data center developments uh, um, introduced in the south of Europe in the past five years only. And last but not least, we have that topic already today, sea cables the new highways of our digital revolution. So um, you see a lot of them land already in the south of Europe. You listened about 12 in Portugal only, and seven new are planned. We are very close to the Ellerlink uh, landing station, one of the, the, the latest announcements. This is actually what will drive further the gravity into south of Europe. Um, let me summarize here. We, we see a huge trend in densification of internet infrastructure, which is extremely important to have it on, on south, in the south on site, and the entire new gravity of the south of Europe. This is our contribution to Europe in general, what DICX has created with 15 different platforms uh, across Europe with uh, a lot of networks already interconnected. But now allow me to share with you what we have done in the south for five years only. These are the four, five hubs. Barcelona is not live ready, but will get live in two weeks from now. We have created hubs like Madrid, hubs like Marseille, Palermo, and of course, um, Lisbon, with a lot of networks already connected. As you can see, Lisbon, one and a half years old, already 55 networks, they do exchange traffic locally here. Not to talk about Madrid with 220 plus or Marseille with above 110. All in total, we are talking about a great Southern European ecosystem already. Around 405 networks on 64 data, center ava data centers available in the South uh, on those five hubs, which is more important than those numbers is the, the beautiful mix of type of networks. You see the colorful world of internet network business today present on these platforms. We we'll talk about the cloud uh, service providers, hyperscares, but also regional and smaller cloud uh, uh, service providers. We're talking about uh, internet access networks, uh, ISPs, uh, carriers, we're talking about gaming companies, we're talking about uh, different stakeholders from the educational or healthcare sectors, we're talking about enterprises, automotive companies started connecting to this type of um, infrastructure. And this is exciting. Why it's exciting? Because it's about the performance and digital experience quality of the users. So. Uh, let, us, let us remember what I shared at the beginning of the presentation, the importance of latency. So look now into the importance of latency, how the concentration of this type of infrastructure helps to provide excellent performance on services to the people and how many people can be served within just um, 15 milliseconds out of the south and now the dot is on Lisbon here in this case is in Portugal we do have more than 180 million people who can be served properly with extremely attractive performance on digital services out of the south of Europe and they they must be served out of the south of Europe properly because it's a matter of physics and latency and if we use the magical threshold of 65 milliseconds as for instance the the new uh, sea cable of Ellerlink provides between the Americas and uh, South America and uh, um, um, the Atlantic uh, uh, shore uh, in Portugal and or in general the, the Iberian Peninsula we are talking about more than 1.4 billion people who can be served with excellent digital infrastructure services. And this leads me to the last point in my presentation if it comes to new highways and new regimes, how traffic can be exchanged across the Atlantic Ocean. We see the development of a new transatlantic corridor, the mid-transatlantic and the south transatlantic corridor, avoiding the unnecessary lap over the north of the Atlantic. It doesn't make any sense anymore. And this is absolutely um, justified by numbers. This is a telegeography 
study justifying these trends. We see where the growth happens. We see the huge trend southward, driven by applications, driven by content, and now supported by infrastructure in the south and supported by the new data highways across the Atlantic Ocean in the south. This is what we believe is the foundation for creating the digital revolution in the south, but also in continents like Africa, interconnecting the south of Europe with the Americas and the Middle East and Africa, creating new hubs as we have done this uh, already, as, um, as I mentioned. So in a summary, latency is the new currency today. Every single millisecond counts. We do see the densification of internet infrastructure becomes extremely important and this must happen on site in the south um, as close as possible to the users and this will and started to creating in the south of Europe also in countries like Portugal a new um, the foundation for new digital hubs with a global importance. I want to thank you so much for your attention. Do not forget to download the the telegeography white paper which will be released on the 17th of June justifying everything I have said uh, uh, about uh, uh, the interconnection landscape in the south uh, of Europe and now I would say bringing all these ideas and great projects which have been presented today will fill up the pipes and where the pipes are good utilized and used the users will get better experience on digital services what I believe today is extremely important to having better life. Thank you so much.